Hi and welcome to this section where we are looking at the matrix algebra and we shall start with the basics i.e. we shall start with addition and transposition so you can please read the motivation it is the one before this page just to you know have a background uh, uh, how matrix algebra involves, evolves okay and a historical perspective so in here uh, a few things to note that we shall be denoting a scalar to be a complex number and then since we know that complex numbers have real part and the imaginary part for that reason we know that real numbers are subsets of complex numbers okay and uh, well uh, they try to give us a motivation for this by saying that um, there is no harm in thinking only in terms of real scalars however it is necessary okay for us to deal with complex numbers because these are avoidable indeed they are avoidable in many areas of uh, applied mathematics or even in engineering here okay now r here will denote the set of real numbers that's the symbol and then c will denote the set of complex numbers okay then the set of n tuples of real numbers will be denoted by that the n tuples are explained uh, in the next line here and then n tuples uh, of complex numbers will be denoted by cn okay for instance this tuple r2 is the set of ordered pairs of real numbers okay i.e in the cartesian plane x y okay axis and then if we have r3 this one here is in the ordinary 3d space x y and z and then uh, similarly analogously if we have r m by n this will denote a matrix of order m by n with real valued entries okay while c m by n will denote a matrix of order m by n with complex valued entries so we shall um, 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 write the matrix A, okay, in this format here with these brackets A, I, J, and B with these brackets here. The small A and I, J are the entries in the particular positions I and J for the matrix A here. We shall use uppercase, and then uh, yeah, and then the matrix B shall have in entry in the ij position denoted by this small b here okay this matrix a and b is said to be equal if they have one the same shape that is important and two that corresponding entries are equal for all i and j okay in other words if it is one one here if it is b in position one one it should be equal to a in position one one if it is b in position four two it should be equal to the entry here a in position four two okay one, same shape and two all entries are equal so um in particular um, um this definition will apply to such arrays let us see this array here we have um, um, how many rows we have three and then uh, we have one column here and then here for v we have one row and then we have the three columns here so um we're saying that even if uh, u and v describe exactly the same point in 3d space okay we cannot consider them to be equal matrices why because they have different shapes this is a uh, three by one while this one here is a one by three so they have different shapes okay and yet they describe exactly the same point because if you plot this you plot this it's exactly the same point all right but we said that they have to be equal if one or they have the same shape and all the entries are equal and uh, well what else uh, we say that an array consisting of a single column like you here it consists of a single column it's called a column vector while an array like v here which consists of a single row is called a row vector okay that leads us to the addition of matrices here okay we can sum two matrices a and b if they have the same shape okay and what does summing entail it says that we add the corresponding entries okay we add the corresponding entries for each i for each entry i and j 
just look at an example here we have this matrix here maybe this is the a the first one here and then we have this other matrix here okay this one may be the b okay so one this is has two rows and three columns or oh, this one here also has two rows and three columns so same shape and we can add how do we add you add corresponding entries the first entry here in one one the positive first row first column to the one here first row first column uh, to get zero here then this one here x uh, this one here in the first row second column you add this one in the first row second column and so on you add corresponding entries all right okay so we have here some terminology of how we shall use the symbol plus okay addition between scalars in some places and addition between matrices at some other places it is the same symbol so whenever we have plus if they are scalars we are adding them if they are matrices we are adding them but of course you can't add a scalar to a matrix so you cannot add um, um, a what um, 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 yeah you cannot add them if anyway we have already said that you can only add matrices of the same um, shape definitely so you cannot add the matrix to a scalar because they have different shape okay um so what else do we have here oh we would like to describe the additive inverse of a to be uh the matrix obtained by negating each entry of a in other words each entry of a you just change its sign for example if the first matrix here is what is a then its negation negative a you simply change the sign here and the sign here and then um, you change this you change this then you change the sign here you change the sign here and then you change the sign here so that means that the negative of a this will be uh, positive two and then this will be negative this will be negative three this will be negative z minus three this will be negative four and then if you negate that that will be uh, y okay so that is just the the additive inverse of a so they are saying that um, uh, if a is that and that oh matrix subtraction can be defined in the natural way in other words if you want to get a minus b it's just the same as saying a plus the negation of b a plus negative b okay so you add each entry in a plus each entry in b with the opposite sign okay so and it is the same here okay if it is doing that so we are saying that for each i and j i e for each corresponding entry okay we shall look at a few examples below there so some properties of matrix addition uh what are some of them we have that if for m by n matrices a b and c then the following properties hold closure if you add any two matrices the result is a matrix okay of the same shape so they are saying a plus b is again an n by n matrix the associative property here um, you can decide to group if you have you're adding a to b i mean if you're adding b to a and then you're adding c you can as well first say let me add c to b and then you add the result to a okay the order here does not matter and then commutativity also holds okay for matrix addition that uh, a plus b is the same as b plus a and then we have the i additive identity the m by n matrix here o okay consisting of all zeros okay so if a is an m by n then o this one here should be a matrix of size m by n but also consisting of all zeros so you add it to a you still get the same a and that is called its additive identity the zero matrix and then here we have um, quite similar to that the additive inverse of course the negation of a in other words if you add a plus minus a then we should get the zero matrix here okay um so we have also we describe what we call here scalar multiplication okay scalar we said here is um, 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 um complex okay it's a complex okay of course that may and we say that a real number is also a complex number because it's a subset of a complex it's not okay okay let me say it's a let us use the term is a subset okay 
so here we have this color too and then if we are to multiply it with the with, with the matrix they say that it has to multiply each and every entry according to this definition here for each i and j so the two multiplies with the one then you get the two it multiplies with the two you get the four it multiplies with the three and so on and so on all right and then um yes and then the same here you can write one half into this 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 into two four six eight zero two is the same as this matrix here okay so we have here our scalar multiplication so the rules for combining addition and scalar multiplication are uh, what you suspect should should be and some of the properties are listed below so we have some of these properties of scalar multiplication here in other words the closure property a scalar times the matrix is again a matrix okay and then the associative property if you have these two scalars alpha and beta and then you're multiplying by them with the matrix a it's you are the the order here does not matter you can first get the matrix i mean the beta times a then you get then you multiply every, then you multiply alpha the result then the distributive property here okay this is the same as saying alpha times a plus alpha times beta you can first add then multiply with the scalar or you can first multiply each with the scalar and then add okay and then here is the distributive uh, property still here okay uh, scalar multiplication is distributed over scalar addition all right uh, so here we have that um, scalar multiplication okay is distributed over scalar addition and then what else do we have here we have the identity property here the number one is number the number one is an identity element under scalar multiplication so if you have the scalar one you multiply by the matrix it gives us the same result okay yeah so what else oh we talk about the transpose so what is the transpose you simply interchange the rows and the columns in a so if you want to find the transpose of this uh, this row now becomes the column okay the first column here one two and then this row here the second row here three four becomes the second column three four and then this row five six becomes the third column five six okay and then it should be evident that the transpose of the transpose is the original matrix in other words if you try to transpose this again you get back the original matrix one two three four five six okay so Whenever a matrix contains complex uh, entries, the operation of the complex conjugation must or eh, almost always accompanies the transpose op or, or operation. Okay, let us just see this, uh, explain this much better here under this section of the complex, I mean the conjugate transpose. So, we have our matrix A here, and then the conjugate matrix, okay, is defined to be um, the complex uh, what did it call it here is defined to be the complex of you can call it the complex conjugate of each entry here or the complex conjugate of each entry here and the conjugate transpose of a okay is defined as follows okay we shall we are going to do the complex transpose of the conjugate transpose of a so we have the conjugate transpose is defined as the transpose then the, you can transpose a then you con i mean then you take its conjugate okay uh, let us look at the example here. just remove some of these ambiguities so here we would like to take the um, um what is it the com conjugate transpose of this matrix first um we are going to um um transpose it okay so that one minus four i will come here one minus four i then um okay in other words this first column here will become the first row so in that initially we have one minus four i and then three and then this second column here becomes the second row here so we would have i and two minus i and then this third column 
becomes the third row here which will be two zero so that is this first part a then you transpose then you take its conjugate the bar there and what is the bar says that we are changing okay the sign of the complex part here so this is one minus four i its complex conjugate says that the, the complex part you change the sign to a positive okay this is three it remains the same we don't change it this is purely it has only a complex part which is positive so it changes to a negative this one here has a complex i mean a real part which remains and then the complex part which is a positive changes to a negative this one here is real it remains and this one is uh, um, 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 real and then it remains we are simply following uh, what they told us here that the complex conjugate of z which is equal to a plus ib okay the real part plus the imaginary part is defined as z bar which is going to be equal to a it remains we don't change but we change the sign of the complex part here so minus ib okay so a few properties here which you can go through like um a plus b transpose is the same as you can transpose each and then add the result at the same with the conjugate transpose and then yes the same here if we have the scalars here if we have alpha times i mean the scalar alpha times the matrix a and then you transpose it is same as saying alpha if this is uh, uh, yeah alpha and then i i think in this case alpha here is real so it has no change then we transpose but in this case if we are now talking about the complex conjugate then we shall have to take the complex conjugate of alpha okay times again the complex conjugate of a here you have to take that into consideration so um what else here you can try to look at some of these properties well we shall not go into the proofs here okay so we simply have to get the idea and then the next thing is draw the examples so um finally we'd like to look at symmetries here one the matrix has to be a square matrix and what did we define a square matrix the number of rows is the same as the number of columns okay so it is symmetric if it's the matrix is equals to its transpose okay and then when is it q symmetric when the matrix equals to the negative of its transpose okay and then it is Hermitian when it is equal to its complex conjugate and then it is skew Hermitian if it is equal to the negative of its complex conjugate so we have seen uh, an example here uh, which we can see here so we can consider the matrix A here okay maybe we could stop here and then in the next video then I will start with this example here and then we can also look at some of this basic arithmetic in, in, in our MATLAB, okay? Thank you and see you in the next video.